Hey everybody, Patton here. Welcome back to the channel. So, during E3, Konami had this like super secret reveal they were going to do, and it turns out that it was super secret. I don't think anybody thought this was what they were going to announce. They're releasing a TurboGrafx-16 Mini. So the first question is, why is Konami doing it and not Hudson? Well, Konami got the rights to Hudson years ago. I want to say it's like the early 2000s, maybe the 2000, like 11, 10 era. So they basically own anything by Hudson. The Adventure Island series, um, Bomberman, anything that Hudson had, now Konami has, which includes the rights to the TurboGrafx-16. So I think this is great. I mean, I mean, I don't have a history with the system. I've never even seen one in person, maybe once. I don't, but I've never touched one, never played a TurboGrafx-16. The only experience I have with the system is, you know, starting about two years ago, or was it 2016 when the NES Classic came out? Uh, when I started modding that, you know, adding the cores to that system, it was a TurboGrafx-16 core, and I was like, hey, I never played one before. Let's check it out. And so far, I'm, I, I've am i been impressed with it. I love it, especially the CD games like uh, Castlevania Rondo of Blood. That is a great game and one of the best Castlevania games, period, hands down. So the system did well. Just what happened, at least here in the States, and I want to say Europe too, it was overshadowed big time when the Genesis came out. The Genesis killed it. And when the Super Nintendo came out, they were just like, okay, sorry. It just couldn't compete over here with those huge names. You know, no, Hudson was a name for software, not hardware. I want to say this was actually the first system they tried to put out. But in Japan, this thing did crazy good. It actually sold more than the Genesis if I have my facts straight. I might not, but I, I think I heard somewhere um, that it, it outsold the Genesis in Japan. Over here in the States, we had something just short of 300 games. Right, so this site says that there were only 147 titles released um, in the American region. 94 in the turbo chip format, 21 in CD format, and 23 in super CD format. I didn't even know there was a super CD format. I don't know what that is. I gotta look into that more and see what super CD games there are. So not a lot of games at all released over here, but in total, there were over 600 games released for the system in all regions. So Japan just about got all those games. I think maybe there was a few over here that they didn't get that they probably wouldn't care for anyway. But over 600 games were released in Japan, not even 200 over here. So you can see the difference. And that was mostly due to really, really bad advertising on Hudson's part. I keep saying Hudson, I hope I got the right company. Whoever was in charge for the TurboGrafx-16, they did a poor job, here in the States at least, on advertising. What they did in Japan, if I remember correctly, is that they only advertised in the largest cities. Well, that worked in Japan because of how the largest cities were spread out, like, you know, it was spread out more over the entire country. But here in the States, I wanna say like in the New York area and maybe LA. So you can see how that may not work due to how the population is in this country as opposed to Japan where, you know, there's a huge percentage in those areas but you're missing the whole rest of the country. Nobody knew that the system even came out. I don't remember seeing it in stores at all, Toys R Us or anything. So this came out in 1987 in Japan and 1989 in the States. That would have made me almost eight years old so maybe my memory's not great anyway. I remember playing the Genesis in stores and that was about the same time. So so before I got into adding these games to my classic systems, um, the only information I ever heard on the Turbo Graphics was from Pat the NES Punk. If you've ever seen any of his videos, like his older Pat the NES Punk videos, because now he does like a podcast type of thing where he doesn't make too many review videos, well, hardly any review videos anymore, uh, but mostly he just tapes his podcast and puts it on his channel. But back in the day, like like early YouTube days, he used to do these really funny reviews on the less mainstream games, but he was a huge advocate of the TurboGrafx-16. So pretty much any information I have comes from what he's told me on his channel. And he has a complete collection, if I remember correctly. Every single game that's ever been released for the TurboGrafx-16, he has. And I think like the Last one was Magical Poppin' or something like that. He actually made a big deal on a Christmas special about getting that game or something. So I have zero experience with the system, but I'm still super excited because I'm all for any retro mini system coming out. I understand, you know, they're just 
chips in fancy cases, but for a couple reasons I want this. One, I'm, you know, I'm obviously collecting all of them, so I can add this to my collection. And this is a good year for many systems. You know, we got the Genesis coming out in September, and now this one, uh, I'll give some details on it at the end of this video. But why I think this is great is that it's showing that game companies are really showing more attention to retro gamers. You know, I think they're realizing that uh, the adult markets, you know, grew up on these games and there is a market. It's no longer just a fad or a trend. There's money to be made in this and they're super cheap to make and everybody's happy. You know, they make a quick buck because, you know, they're, they're, they're cheap to assemble and distribute and everything like that. Super cheap. It's, it's, it's pennies on the dollar it costs them to, to make these things. You know, and we're happy because we get to get these games that we had as a kid. And a lot of these games, especially for the TurboGrafx-16, are hard to find now. You know, and even, like, there's there's rare games on the Nintendo and Super Nintendo worth, like, thousands of dollars. So if you were to try, you know, maybe you grew up with a rare game back in the day, you want to replay it. Well, you know, now you can with these many systems, but you, you know, otherwise you'd be spending hundreds of dollars on these cartridges. So I love that companies are starting to see that they're trying to keep their older games in circulation, you know, like Konami just did with the Castlevania Anniversary Collection, the Contra Anniversary Collection, you know, arcade stuff. Konami seems to really be hitting it on the head with this retro stuff, like preserving their old IPs. It's actually really funny because one of the uh, boards on Reddit that I frequent, um, when they found out about the, the announcement, they were like, this is dumb, and they were not having it. So I made a post, and I was like, well, I kind of want a TurboGrafx-16 Mini. You know what? When you hear Konami make an announcement, and this is this is Konami, okay? Special announcement from Konami. What do you, what first comes to mind? You know, maybe you knew Metal Gear Solid, even though Kojima's no longer with the company. I'm pretty sure he's with Sony now. So, you know, maybe a new Metal Gear Solid, maybe a new Castlevania, either, you know, a brand new one, which I, I wasn't thinking anyway, or a new collection. I thought maybe they would reveal that there was a second anniversary collection. Can you have a second anniversary? It wouldn't be like a, a special anniversary. It'd be like, happy 31st anniversary, Castlevania. Or something else. I mean, they, they have the rights to a ton of stuff. You know, the Turtles franchise. As a, as a huge, huge, diehard Silent Hill fan, nowhere in my mind did I think Konami was going to bring out a new Silent Hill game. That will not happen, I don't think, Ever. But I'm pretty sure that was a subreddit I was on where people was like, oh, they're so mad. But I'm like, if you know Konami and you know how they treat the Silent Hill franchise, there was no way on this earth they would think about releasing a new Silent Hill game, especially after messing up what they had with Kojima and the PT demo. No way in this world would they ever think to backpedal like that. Nothing against Konami, but I think they're too proud of a company to, you know, admit that maybe they made a mistake on a couple ends and how they treat their employees and things like that. So there was no way they would try to appeal to that franchise by bringing out a new one. There's that just never in a million years was I even thinking that. So it was so funny to see that people were getting upset, you know, oh, it's a TurboGrafx-16 Mini. It's like, nobody wants that. There's plenty of people who want a TurboGrafx-16 Mini. Like, you know, the people, well, the few people, I guess, over here in the States who grew up with one. But in Japan, this thing's gonna sell like crazy. I don't think this is going to be like a doorbuster over here in the States and probably Europe. I've talked to a couple people from the European countries and gotten their views on the whole thing and they were saying the same thing that it was not big in in Europe so I got to take their word for it so it's probably gonna not do as well as the NES or SNES classic um I hope it does better than the PlayStation it's hard to say right now because Sony the thing with the PlayStation classic and we all know the issues you know uh emulation wasn't what they wanted you know using a third-party emulator uh, the games list was average at best even though the best games they had on there were some of the best games on the system the overall package of games was not to hardly anybody's liking but the thing with sony was you know they made a lot of hype from the beginning you know playstation classic and the first five games you know they announced were like super high profile games they knew what they were doing advertising wise metal gear solid uh final fantasy 7 Ridge Racer Type 4, 
all these games people knew and loved, so the expectations were high up. I'm talking about the freaking PlayStation Classic again. But what they didn't do was show any heart or soul into the product. It was just like, okay, here's our next update. Uh, here's the rest of the games. Oh, by the way, we're... And, and they were making the announcement, oh, you know, we're not using a first party, you know, emulator. We're, we're going with this one. And we're going with this. Oh, we're, you're going to get PAL games. It's like they're telling these facts to people thinking, like, we're okay with it. Like, you know, we're going to do what we want and you have to deal with it. And on the flip side, when the Genesis Mini was announced, you know, Sega did a complete, you know, 180 and they're like, you know what? We're not going to give this to Ad Games. Also, what games do you guys want on it? Hey, how about we show you some here? We'll show you some here. We'll do it in a live stream format with people who love the system. You know, if you ever tuned into one of their live streams for the games reveals, it was, it was fun. It was awesome. You didn't see any of that with the PlayStation Classic. You saw, here's some games. Uh, here's the controller. Here's the price. And we're going to release it now. There you go. So I hope um, Konami goes the way that Sega is going and makes this a fun release and um, so far they're, they're I, it's hard to say what they're doing but let me give you what we know on the system already so to start off with we have no release date or price point we don't know how much it's going to be we don't know when this is coming out we can assume it's going to release um, before the christmas season this year if they're smart they'll do that you don't want to make an announcement in june and then release it six months later not in the holiday season i think what konami's trying to do um, Konami's pretty good on their on their release schedule. Um, they're trying to release it during the holiday season. That makes sense. They want people to see this. You know, parents maybe be like, oh, hey, that's whatever. I'm going to grab that for my kid. Or I'm going to grab that for my husband or boyfriend or girlfriend or wife. And, you know, because they mentioned something about this system, so this will be a good Christmas present. So we can probably assume this year, holiday season. Also, their website, to get into it, you have to do this age gate thing. It's really annoying. Um, so let's read what Konami has to say about the TurboGrafx-16. Relive the thrills and emotion from back in the day. It had revolutionary graphics and sound. Did you know that it's not actually a 16-bit system, but it's an 8-bit system? And just processors and certain things bring it up to 16 bits, but at its core, it's only 8 bits. And still holds a special place in the hearts of fans today. Uh, now at long last, the TurboGrafx-16 is making a comeback. It's set to return in the form of the TurboGrafx-16 Mini, new compact model that comes preloaded with a selection of popular titles. And again, we have different games for the different regions. I want to say the PAL and American regions have the same games listed so far. Japan has a small selection that's a little bit different, but we'll talk about that in a minute. And also the picture I'm looking at here, and I'll put it up somewhere, um, of, you know, how every mini system comes out. You have the hand holding it, you know, the hand model. Because I never saw one in person, I don't know how big they were. Um, I think they're, they were kind of big, but the picture, it doesn't look that mini. Um, the dude, or, yeah, this is a guy holding it. Um, he has to, like, grip it. And I'm like, it's, it's like three hands worth of system, whereas, like, the Nintendo is like, I can fit my hand over the Nintendo. So, I don't know how many it is. I'm sure it's, it's a lot more smaller than usual. So, they wanted to make three points with the system. Save at any time with quick save. So, we will have suspend points. We don't know how many per game. Uh, the console features a quick save function that allows you to save at any point during a game, save your progress, and continue playing when it's convenient for you. So, quick save options. That's nice. Choose from various display modes. All right, so already we seem to be doing more than the PlayStation Classic. All right, good job, Konami. Not only is the console ready to plug and play using the included HDMI cable, it also features different modes that let you choose how your games look, such as replacing the scan lines on a CRTV. CRT TV. So display modes, CRT filters, a lot of people like to use those over bilinear filtering. I'm a fan of bilinear filtering. Personally, don't care too much for the scan lines, but I probably won't use them anyway, so who cares? But it will have display modes, and on the picture, it's got a 4-3 mode, so maybe they'll have it in 16-9 format as well. I know some people, weirdos, like to play these games stretched out in 16.9 format, but you know, if, if that's your thing, that's your thing bunch of weirdos and then this one right here which really like i don't know uh i get what they're going with with this one but this this last point is actually kind of funny to me anyway so the third point they want to make simultaneous five player gaming with a multi-tap 
by using a multi-tap to connect additional controllers up to five people can play together simultaneously and this is sold separately you can't get the multi-tap um, you have to you have to buy it separate so and I know there's a couple games on here uh, that use a five-player multi-tap and I know one of them they've only announced six games so far so the first game and I'll just talk about this because we're talking about the multi-tap is Dungeon Explorer that is a five-player game um, something else that uh, Konami hasn't released with this system is how many controllers it's going to come with um, all the pictures I've seen so far has been one controller according to the picture they look like USB ports um, and there are two controller ports but it doesn't say how many it's going to release with I would think two controllers would be good let me look at this lineup and see if there's any reason I don't know if any of the first games of the lineup except for Dungeon Explorer are multiplayer games. They kind of look like they would be single player games, I'm not sure. So you're going to sell the system hopefully with two controllers. Um, you're going to hope that enough people want to play the five player games to get the multi-tap, but then they have to buy three more controllers to use the multi-tap. So that in a business sense is a is weird to me I guess um, I think you're asking or your expectations of what people want uh, is kind of weird maybe that really die hard you know hardcore uh, TurboGrafx-16 fans will want this um, it's a really cool idea I'm, I'm not saying this is a bad idea from the standpoint of like a fan perspective like that's awesome that you're including a multi-tap um, and that you have five player games um, but the the one game is Dungeon Explorer uh, that you're releasing with, we can almost guarantee it's not been um, at, it's not been announced that this game is on the system. But the Bomberman games, those are super fun multiplayer games. So I bet they will release Bomberman for this as well. I wouldn't say it's a bad move. Um, I hope people take advantage of it and they get the multi-tap and extra controllers. But they need if if that's what they're going to do, and they should probably keep the price point of the controllers and the multi-tap low because. Already, we don't know if the system's going to sell well, at least here in the States and the European regions. So to create add-ons for a system that may not sell well already, um, you know, I'm no businessman, but I remember Sega doing that, you know, with the CD add-on, 32X, you know, just kept adding on and adding on when the system was basically not selling well anymore. You know, it was way late into its lifetime that they were doing all this stuff, mostly the, the 32X over to Sega CD. If they go about it the right way, it could work. You'd also have to find four friends to be playing games with. So this is geared towards the diehard fans, which is fine. And I, the fact that they're doing it anyway, you know, and I'm, I'm sure it's, it's cheap to manufacture all this stuff. So, hey. You know, more power to you, Konami. Awesome. So the games that we have announced so far, we have six. We don't know the total amount of games yet. They have not released that, but we do know they will be both the card games. But we do know they're going to be the card games and CD games because the Japanese version has CD games. I don't know if any of these are CD based because I don't know the system well enough. But anyway, uh, the games we have now, the six listed, you have our type, which is a shooter and if you go on the website, you can see some pictures. I'm trying to remember which one our type was. Is that that's not the fish one? No, that's Darius. Darius was the fish shooter. Um, this looks. I know this. Oh, this is the one where you shoot the pod out and you can do things like that. Okay, so that's our type. Good shooter. You have New Adventure Island, which appears to be. I want to say it's a remake of the first Adventure Island. You got Master Higgins sets off on a journey to rescue Tina, his bride to be and some children who have also been kidnapped. So I think that's funny that, you know, his main thing is he wants his, his fiance. But also if there's any kids that need, you know, rescuing along the way, I guess he'll stop and get them if it's convenient for him. Next we have Ninja Spirit and I've seen this game before played by um, the Cacho from Game Center at CX. Um, if I remember correctly, he beat this game super fast. If you don't know what I'm talking about, the Kacho is a character from the show Game Center CX, which is from Japan. He's an older guy. I think he's in his 40s now, but this show's been out for like 10 years. So he started when he was in his early 30s. Basically, it's a show where he tries to play games as fast as he can. 
you know, within 12 hours, he's trying to beat these games. That's the whole premise of the show. Normally, he plays NES games, and he just tries to beat them. And he's funny. He's a comedian. Um, it's a really great show. If you haven't seen Game Center CX, like I said, I'll leave a link in my description for you to check it out. I love that show. It's one of my favorite shows ever. It's very entertaining. So Ninja Spirit was set in Japan, last days of the Edo period. You're avenging your father's death and unraveling the mystery of your own birth. Uh, so you gotta get some, uh, kill some ninjas. You are a ninja, you're killing other ninjas. That happens a lot in the ninja community. Like I mentioned before, Dungeon Explore, um, action role-playing game. Use your weapons and magic attacks and work your way through labyrinths of dungeons in search of the Aura Stone and the land of Odessia. You're trying to save it from destruction. All right, you can choose from eight different character classes. Up to five people can play together simultaneously with the multi-tap. So we have two more games here. Technically three. One of this is a, is a compendium. That's not the right word. Compilation? Maybe. But it's only two games. Does that still count? Anyway, the next one is Ease. You know, the YS. It's not it's not Ys, right? It's Ease. It makes more sense for it to be Ease. I hope I have that right. Anyway, Ease Book 1 and 2. Okay, so here's a CD-ROM game. Sweet. Utilizing the large storage capacity offered by the CD-ROM format, this title combines Nihon Falcom's action role-playing games, Ease and Ease 2, into a single seamless experience. The sound and graphics have also been greatly improved, making this legendary tale feel even more epic. So we do have a CD game on the US version. That's great. I'll tell you why that's great in a minute after we talk about the sixth game. Alien Crush. This is the most interesting game on the list for me. I had no idea this game existed. It's a pinball game with aliens. It's so cool looking though. This unique title combines simple pinball gameplay with gruesome extraterrestrial graphics. The game field is split into upper and lower screens that you move between and both of them are packed with exciting gimmicks and mechanisms. And I think I heard that there's other games in the series too, but an alien inspired pinball table. And it's not just like, you know, cutesy aliens. These things are gross Geiger looking brains and crap everywhere aliens. So, so far of the games announced, that one is the most interesting to me. I want to play a pinball game where I have to kill aliens. That's awesome. All right, so it looks like only two games between the English version and Japanese are shared between the systems. Both systems have the Ease compilation and Dungeon Explorer. Japan gets one of the Bonk games, which I think is going to be released over here. Bonk was the biggest mascot on the system, so I, I'm pretty sure we're going to get Bonk over here as well. Um, I know this game, Kung Fu something, I can't remember. It kind of reminds me of the Kung Fu game on the NES, you know, just with much better graphics. Super Star Soldier looks like a shooter, hard to tell. And they get Castlevania Rondo of Blood in Japan. So... Knowing that there's some games on the Japanese version, we will probably get over here with Bonk. And knowing that we will also have these CD-based games over here with the Ease 1 and 2, I'm hoping, hoping, hoping that we get Rondo of Blood as well. That's my biggest hope. That I think that was one of the biggest games on the system. Or at least the, one of the best games. May, may, may not have sold as well as some of the other games, but it, at least is one of the most known and it's gained a lot of popularity over here in the states it was released on the psp as a remake just recently released on uh, castlevania requiem for the more modern systems i think the ps4 and xbox but not the switch yet if there's any game i want on this system it's that one so knowing that we can have cd games and you know knowing that we have games on the japanese version we'll probably get over here i really hope we get rondo of blood that's my my biggest one it's not because i'm a castlevania fan it's, it's because I'm a Castlevania fan. A lot of still unknowns, but that's okay because we have a new mini system coming out that nobody expected. I never thought in a thousand years we'd be getting, you know, or at least the next one wasn't going to be um, a TurboGrafx-16 mini. I don't know what the next one could have be. Um, we already know that Nintendo said they weren't going to release an N64 mini. We all know if there's enough want for the system that they'll they'll put some money down for it. It's not... It's not a definite no, but I am super, super excited for the TurboGrafx-16. As soon as I get any more information out, I'll let you guys know I'm going to pre-order this thing. You know, it's going to sit right next to my Genesis Mini pre-order for however long until I can pick it up. Hopefully, uh, Best Buy will get these in. I don't see that happening, 
But if they do, that would be cool. Otherwise, I got to go back to GameStop. But let me know in the comments what you think about Konami's reveal. Do you want the TurboGrafx-16? If so, is it because you, you know, had one when you were younger? Or is it because you're just curious about what kind of games are on it? Or do you think this was a huge mistake by Konami? Do you think they should have announced something else and they have no business getting into the mini market? I, for one, commend them. I think this is a great idea. I do think there's a market for mini systems right now if you advertise it well. Don't pull a PlayStation Classic. Be a Genesis Mini. So that's all I have for you guys this time. As always, thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you next time.